Hi, welcome to Reality Check. I'm Wang Guan. In China's annual political meetings known as the Two Sessions, Beijing sets social, economic, and security policy priorities in a government work report. So, what is in it this year? And where is the world's second largest economy headed? We will be talking to experts with first some highlights of this annual report. For the first time ever, China has set no GDP growth target. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang cited the global pandemic and trade and economic uncertainties as the reasons why Beijing did not set a target. In fact, China has stopped setting rigid numerical targets for quite some time. In 2016 through 2019, it made its GDP growth objectives a range instead of a fixed figure. But this year, COVID-19 complicated things. China took drastic measures in locking down cities and shutting down its economy to contain the spread of the virus. Here's what the Chinese Premier said on the trade-off between growing the economy and saving lives. But there is a target for jobs, which Beijing says is its top priority right now. Over 9 million, that is the number of new urban jobs to be created for 2020. Now, to make that happen, Beijing says it will rely heavily on a more proactive fiscal policy. Government spending will go up by 1 trillion yuan, increasing the deficit to GDP ratio to 3.6 percent, the highest in decades. On top of that, a special 1 trillion yuan treasury bond will be issued. The funding will go directly to counties and cities coping with the economic fallout from the coronavirus. Now, meanwhile, there will also be a 500 billion yuan, 500 billion yuan tax cut and fee cut, primarily targeting small and medium-sized enterprises. Now, where does all this money come from? Beijing says it has ordered all levels of governments to slash non-essential spending, such as on new office buildings, by as much as 50 percent. Now, for foreign investors, Beijing says there will be a much shorter negative list, making more Chinese sectors open for foreign investment. Meanwhile, a negative list will also be drawn up for cross-border trading in services. Another number grabbing headlines is China's defense budget. It is growing, but at a slower rate since 2014. In fact, the 6.6 percent increase this year is the slowest increase in nearly two decades. Compare China's defense budget of $178 billion to America's 2019 defense budget of $680 billion. So how to understand the goals and priorities set out by this year's government work report? I'm joined by Yao Yang, professor from Peking University. Your thoughts on the fact that there has been no GDP target set for this year? Yeah, that was a kind of a surprise. You know, everyone expected uh, there should be a GDP growth target. Uh, usually, the government report did that, uh, but this year there was none. I, I think uh, there were uh, several reasons. Uh, uh, one reason was actually spoken out uh, by Premier Li Keqiang himself. Uh, he said uh, it was because uh, there are many uncertainties uh, uh, in this year. I think uh, the government also wanted uh, to leave some room to implement uh, other important uh, policies. I think there are two uh, such policies. Uh, one is uh, to make sure that those uh, unemployed people, low-income people, can be helped uh, by the government. Uh, that needs money, right? So the government uh, can set aside uh, some money uh, to help those uh, really poor people instead of uh, boosting uh, the economy. Uh, the second consideration probably is also uh, the government's plan to eradicate absolute poverty by the end of this year, right? So that was the goal set by uh, President Xi Jinping. Uh, and this year, China needs to fulfill that goal. Uh, that also needs uh, resources. Uh, without a growth target, and the government can spend more money to fill, uh, fulfill those two goals. 
So what messages should foreign companies pick up in terms of China's further opening up um, from this government work report? In this uh, year's uh, work report, there is an exciting message uh, that I hope uh, foreign companies uh, can get. Uh, that is, uh, China is going to drastically uh, shorten the negative risk, including in the services sector. Uh, we all know the services sector is highly regulated, not just in China, but in other countries, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, the services sector, probably the, the last sector uh, for China to open up, right? So if uh, China really shortened the negative list in that sector, then uh, foreign companies in the services sectors uh, that can come into China. And that's uh, uh, going to help uh, foreign companies, but also uh, help uh, Chinese companies. Uh, we know there is uh, quite a large gap between China's uh, service uh, companies' uh, productivity and then the productivity of service uh, companies, uh, say, in the United States. Uh, so that's uh, going to be mutually helpful. Professor Yao, thank you so much for your time. Another issue in focus is a draft bill on Hong Kong. For that, we turn to Wang Huiyao, president at Center for China and Globalization. Talking about Hong Kong, a draft bill on Hong Kong regarding China's national security has been deliberated and uh, potentially passed. Uh, you know, again, some Western media said that this, is, uh, this means the dead of Hong Kong's rule of law institutions. Uh, do you agree? So it's unfortunate to see that, uh, uh, you know, maybe a, a small group of people in Hong Kong wants to uh, uh, seek independence of Hong Kong, which is, I, I think it's really uh, uh, ridiculous because, uh, you know, nobody has ever said Hong Kong is not a part of China. So, uh, so this is really not uh, making sense. But also, uh, you know, since uh, Hong Kong and China are so uh, intertwined and uh, the Great Bay Area is really the great future hope for Hong Kong, and uh, also the Hong Kong young people can really have the opportunity in the Great Bay Area to, to settle there, to, to start a business, uh, to buy apartment, or to, to even uh, uh, build up the family there. I see a great integration there. So, so somehow the, the chaotic and uh, uh, riots in Hong Kong cannot continue. So somehow, you know, uh, the government has to do something, and also parliament has to really pass some resolution. Uh, here's, a, here's the red line, you know, you cannot pass it. Here's the, uh, uh, here's the national unity. And here is the, uh, the livelihood and also economic uh, uh, life, life and death of Hong Kong that we have to maintain. We have to seek the, put the 7 million of Hong Kong people's interests in mind. We cannot jeopardize Hong Kong. We cannot uh, kill the, uh, the, uh, the golden goose that uh, no laid golden eggs. So, so I think, uh, you know, I, I think the, uh, the, 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 the new uh, policy coming on Hong Kong is really for the uh, interest of Hong Kong, for the benefit of Hong Kong, and for the prosperity of Hong Kong. And for the peace and stability of Hong Kong, so so I think you know if that is uh, uh, stabilized, we will see uh, tourists uh, uh, fly back to Hong Kong. We will see spending continue to Hong Kong. We see Hong Kong become the, the most important uh, bridges uh, connecting China and the outside world. So so I, I'm I'm very uh, uh, really uh, you know uh, care about Hong Kong, and uh, I think all the uh, parts of uh, from mainland are in Hong Kong to, to to want to see the continue continuous uh, prosperity and uh, you know, uh, uh, also the stability in Hong Kong. That will do it for this edition of Reality Check. For more, log on to CGTN.com or to your favorite social media platform and search for Reality Check with me, Wang Guan. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon.